Hi, welcome to Polymer Clay TV. I'm Kira, and today I'm going to show you how to make this really fun word cloud pendant. Let's get started. So as usual, I'm going to use a whole bunch of stuff to make with this little project, but you can always feel totally free to do this however you like. So I'm using Primo Accents Clay in my favorite color, which is, I don't know if you call it a color, but it's Graphite Pearl, the dark, um, just beautiful sort of gunmetal metallic, and a couple other colors, and I will use some liquid clear bakeable to seal my powders and I've got these little um, eye screws for hanging and some other fun things. So I'm going to make this in the shape of a shrine and this is the arch shrine set that makes a graduated shape. So I'm going to just show you how to make a framed shape. So basically this is my imagined silk screen. It's a word cloud and I like this little area right here, create, learn, explore, play, that type of thing. So I'm going to concentrate on that area because that's what I'm going to cut out. And I've got a background color of clay to do that with. So I'm just going to uh, get my um, section here that I want to concentrate on right in the middle of that and push it down into my clay, get it stuck. Because it's going to be a block out for the mica powder. And once you have it firmed down, then you're just going to want to use a, um, a brush and this is the white version of we have a purple set that looks just like this in the shop and it's sort of a soft yet firm brush so I'm gonna do an ombre with my these are colors from the jewel palette the purple and blue so I'm just going to dip and pounce those powders onto the screen in this general area where the cutter would go. So I think I actually am going to turn it upside down. So in this area here is where I want to get my powders. And I'm pouncing them on liberally because I do want them to go down through the screen and onto the clay and get stuck there. So you can just work on this and I'm going to work on this for a few minutes till I feel like I've got a good layer. I just wanted to show you a little technique thing when you're using mica. So when you are in the trenches here trying to make sure it's stuck on your clay, you can scrub your brush back and forth. That will help the mica powder really get down into the screen and sort of make sure that you've covered your area. and you've got that nice sparkly, it's so pretty, okay? And you can wash off your brush and your silk screen with water in the sink. I'm gonna put that to the side for a minute so I can make my window. So what I wanna do here is create the window. And I wanna find a nice clear piece of clay because this will be layered like this. Okay, so I might even flip this upside down because I see a little crack there that I don't want in my finished piece. So first I'm going to create the window by cutting out the smaller piece. And I want this part to remain intact so you're going to be lifting out this center part. So if it comes with the cutter, that's great. If it stays stuck down, then just peel it out because we want this part. This we're going to use for something else. 
And because we want this to be nice and clean edged, you might want to use your rubber tools. Because 3D cutters tend to leave a little bit of a raggedy edge, and you just clean it up pretty easily by pressing it to the side with your rubber or silicone tip tools. Someday this technology that we use to make all these fun tools is going to catch up with our ideas. Because <laughs> right now, 3D printing is awesome. You can get really fun shapes with it, crisp edges and stuff, but not... Um, you know, it's just a limitation of the technology where we can't get a really super fine edge without um, having the cutter be too thin. So that it, we have to balance between strength and cool designs. But I'm sure, I have faith in the technology. Someday it's going to be better than it is today. It gets better every day with the guys who program this stuff. So once you have your window clean... So that we'll be able to see through to the design underneath. You know, spend a few minutes on that. Make sure it's going to look nice because we're going to layer this over this. So that we can see through to the words that you want to emphasize. So... Once you decide where you want your window to be, you're, you're going to press it down onto that layer of clay beneath it. And then we're going to do that double cut. Now you can decide if you want it to be, if you want to just go for it with your, with your cutter, or if you want to do the plastic wrap technique, which is how I always like to do it. I like to lay plastic wrap over before I cut because I feel that it gives me a nice cleaner edge and it rounds and bevels that edge for me. So I'm just going to center this up and cut all the way through both layers of clay. This is going to give me that beveled edge and also seal the outer edges together so that it doesn't fall apart. And then we can take off the outside pieces, save them for something else. And look how pretty that is. Now, I would like mine to have a design. So I've got my flowery stamp and I'm going to stamp it around the outside edge. I'm going to wait on the top because I'm going to peel this up and put those um, hanger things on there. My little eye pins, eye hooks. So because it's on Teflon, I'm going to I can peel this back. And before I stamp anything on this upper edge, I want to embed my hooks. That way I don't have to touch it again up here. And before I do my stamping, I can push out the fingerprints, all that. Think about it as you're making things, what steps you should take to make sure your pieces look finished. Because when you push findings and things into it, you usually leave a some kind of mark. So now I can use my, my little tool here and that will help even further to press those eye hooks in and make sure that nothing's going to fall out later. So at this point, maybe I'll use this purple which I really like to accent the flowers.
and then I'll be done and ready for baking. I like to scoop my pigments out of the cap because then I get a little bit less on my finger. Usually I store all my pigments upside down so that my caps have a little dusting in them specifically for this purpose. So if you've never seen me do that before, that's, that's what I was doing. I store them so that the pigment actually is falling into the cap so that when I open them later, there's a coating on the cap that I can pick up like that. So I hope that you enjoyed this idea. I'm going to just throw this on a tile and bake it. Come on over to Polymer Clay Tribe. Share what you make. We love to see all the fun ideas that people have. And uh, you can check out more projects at the blog at polymerclaytv.com. Thanks for watching.